Between massive BLM marches, picnics in the Phoenix Park and now an 80 person Oireachtas golf event, one really has to ask, does any politician in Ireland take their own lockdown seriously? This is Ben Scallon and you're watching Gripped Media. Much controversy has been swarming around the government following an 81 person Oireachtas golf event in Clifton, County Galway last week. This came just 24 hours after the government implemented brand new lockdown laws for us all to follow, including limiting indoor gatherings to a maximum of six people. Meanwhile, as these rules were announced, they were having an indoor golf dinner with more than 80 attendees. One rule for thee, another for me. The event, which took place in the Station House Hotel, included a plethora of influential guests, including, but not limited to, Fine Gael Senator Jerry Buttimer, EU Trade Commissioner Phil Hogan, who is a member of Fine Gael, Fianna Fáil Agriculture Minister and Deputy Leader Dara Kaliri, Supreme Court Judge Seamus Wolfe, former RTE broadcaster Sean O'Rourke, independent TD and head of the Golf Society Noel Grealish, Michael Harty, former independent TD and chair of the Oireachtas Committee on Health, if you can believe it, and a whole host of other councillors, former MEPs, TDs, ambassadors, senators and the general elite of the country. You get the idea. Notably, John Flaherty, the captain of the guard, was also in attendance. This is almost comical as Flaherty is the man responsible for health and safety around Leinster House, ensuring that the parliament building complies with COVID-19 restrictions. So, in other words, the man who is in charge of making sure the government follows their own rules was at an event which blatantly broke them. It would be hilarious if it wasn't such an outrage. As if this wasn't bad enough, it's since come to light that the EU Commissioner for Trade, Phil Hogan, was stopped by Gardaí for using his phone while driving through County Kildare, which is under lockdown, shortly before the scandalous event. He since resigned over it. There are even suggestions that Hogan had not been quarantined upon return from overseas, and the HSE is disputing his claim that he was allowed to leave under the new regulations. In other words, he's confirming what we all instinctively already knew, that there was one set of rules for the elites like him, politicians, mainstream media figureheads, judges, etc., and another for the common plebs like us. While they write the laws around lockdown, telling us where we can go, who we can spend time with, how many people we can have at a funeral or a party and so forth, they are free to act with impunity and go on fancy golf events with their friends. They aren't bound by the laws, they just create them. Following them is our job. But while many people are shocked and appalled by this, we should ask ourselves the obvious question. Was the lockdown ever taken seriously by our leaders? This is far from the first time a bunch of politicians have lectured us about lockdown and then broken it themselves. They've behaved this way from the very start. For example, Tanish Javaradkar was happy to condemn the golf event and say that it never should have happened. Meanwhile, this is the same man who went for a picnic with a bag of cans in the park back in May, the very same week that he ordered the general public not to have picnics themselves. Not long after that, on June 6th, People Before Profit attended a massive Black Lives Matter demonstration through Dublin City with Breed Smith TD in attendance. Notably, just beforehand, Smith was pontificating about how lockdown was needed to quote unquote save lives and then immediately turned around and went to a huge demonstration with throngs of people congregating in the streets, undoubtedly spreading the virus. So to be clear, when she said lockdown was needed to save lives, was she lying to the general public? Or is she willing to engage in behaviour she knows will kill people? It's one or the other, there is no third option. Shortly after, we had a Sinn Féin BLM event, which similarly featured no social distancing or masks. And the same month, they packed the streets of Belfast for Bobby Story's funeral, showcasing Michelle O'Neill's lack of social distancing as she casually took selfies with her friends. Later again, Fine Gael held a massive state funeral for tragically slain Garda detective Colm Horkin, which similarly featured huge crowds of public officials, including then-Justice Minister Charlie Flanagan. Leo Varadkar and Garda Commissioner Drew Harris were there as well. Now, the fallen Garda's death was tragic, obviously, God rest his soul and bless his family, but if the virus is as deadly as they want us to believe, why would we see a mass assembly in the street for any reason, no matter how righteous? Does the virus know to stay away from funerals and respect the dead? Clearly not. 
And now we have this Oroctus Golf event, which may finally be the nail in the coffin for the government's credibility. All of this leaves two possibilities. Either politicians have been carelessly spreading a deadly virus that they think will kill people, in which case they're monsters, or they don't really believe what they're telling us about the need for a lockdown and are just expecting the rest of us to blindly follow it while they go on with their lives as normal. There is no third option, it's one or the other. They want to send Gardy to your house if you break rules that they won't even abide by. You can't go to the funeral of your friends or relatives, but they can go for a few holes of golf with the lads and have lavish dinners using their exorbitant taxpayer funded salaries. Combine all of this with bizarre policies we've seen like making the public buy 9 euro worth of food at pubs and it's no wonder we're starting to see thousands of people in the streets protesting lockdown. Can you really blame people for losing confidence in the system when this is how our leaders behave? Please like and share this video and if you enjoyed it please consider signing up for a monthly donation via the link on screen to help us produce more content like this. Alternative media like Gripped needs all the assistance it can get and every donation goes a long way. As always, thanks for watching.